we'll start off start officially welcome to the stanley street social podcast harry sweeney it's good to finally have you on the show thank you hey yeah, i've been uh been a keen watcher so it's good to be on long time listener first time caller yes yes i think i've listened to pretty much all of them they were great <laughs> um well also off the top we're at the first day of the tour de france rest day you're riding the tour de france like big deal big 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 deal how was how was like well let's go back to let's go back to the start when did you when did you find out uh i found out about a week before but initially before that i knew i was on the long list a week before dauphine and before that I, I've, I've been speaking to caleb a little bit about it like joking around because i missed the giro um because i had COVID. um I only had four weeks training and they didn't think it was enough. So uh, I was joking with Caleb, oh yeah, we should do the tour. And then um, I started like riding all, all right. And then before Dauphiné, they said like, yeah, you're going to do Dauphiné in Belgium back to back, which is 13 days of racing in 15 days. And then try and like do the lead out in Belgium. So that was sort of the plan to see if I was up to scratch or not. And then I, we, we obviously did really well in Belgium and then, yeah, it was, um, I think it was pretty much after that. I sort of knew that it would happen. Yeah. Did you say so you picked up COVID? Did you have any like issues with it or was it just like common cold? No, nah, there was, I actually thought when I had it, if I was obese, I would die. That was, <laughs> I was, there was one day in particular where I woke up at 3am, like heart rate 150, could barely breathe. And then I went and had a bath because my whole body was aching. And then I was out of breath getting out of the bath. And I was like, oh, man, like I'm in the peak of my life if this is what it feels like. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't really flash. But, yeah, then there's some guys that don't even know they have it. So it's, yeah, goes one or two ways, I guess. Yeah. And who, who ranked? Who, how did you find out you got the call up? Uh, Caleb. Uh, I was with Caleb the day that it happened. And then I was actually at a barbecue with Wellens. Uh, who else was that? Degan uh, and Caleb. And we all got a call at the exact same time, but the directors didn't know we're at the barbecue together. And Thomas got a call and came back to the table really silent. And I was like, oh no, I wonder if he's not made the tour. And then my phone went off as well. And then went back to the table and we're like, we're going to the tour. <laughs> Yeah, and like did it did it come around quick like it was like oh, one week out you're like oh, i'm not on the tour list and then all of a sudden you're living your childhood dream you're on you're on the tour de france yeah. it did come around really quick actually because dauphine belgium and then i had 10 days at home and then i was at the tour so i think it was good in one respect because it meant that like i couldn't really cook it up in training you know like I did such a hard block of racing that I just like sat literally sat on my lounge and on the beach for 10 days a couple rides behind the moto here and there and then it was the tour yeah nice yeah nice and and like th things were things things were obviously moving well Caleb was in super condition at Belgium tour you fitted in nicely to that lead out um coming in was like that those first few days how how was that overlaying the stress of the opening stages of the Tour de France, your first Tour de France, and you've got Caleb Ewan to look after. Yeah, it was uh, a lot different to, I think, how a lot of other Neo pros would have experienced their first Grand Tour, you know, like going to the Giro or the Vuelta to get round and get experience versus going into the Tour knowing that I was there to actually do a job. Um, and I think in some respects, having the first two days as hard as they were was really good for me mentally because I wasn't having the nerves of the lead out and the nerves of doing my first tour all in one day. So it was sort of good to, you know what it's like in a stage race where the first day is always crazy and then it starts to calm down, even if it's just a little bit. Um, so by the first sprint, I knew, like I felt comfortable in the bunch. Like I, I was a bit more reassured if that makes sense. Mm. Was the stress um, like nothing you've ever experienced before in that, in that first stage? Um, I or did it just look bad it, on TV? 
it was fine until the crash on top of the KOM. And then it was crazy. Like nothing I've experienced from there because the whole day I was riding around, I'm like, Oh, it's not like so bad at the tour. Like it's, we're going quick. It's like just Dauphin a sort of level. And then the crash happened and it was just like guys running in the ditches to get around the crash. And Oh man, it, it was, yeah, it really picked up from there. And then I'd never experienced anything like not being able to move up even one wheel for 45 kilometers it was just yeah it just completely blocked impossible to move just the strongest guys in the world going full noise yeah exactly and the roads are in at that point four or five meters wide maximum so it's like you're already bar to bar and if you touch the brakes you move back 20 positions so it's yeah it was really just whoever had the biggest balls i guess yeah, was it was it the same from the get go on day, day two? Oh, it was day two. The um, second carnage day in Bretagne. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess so. It was a similar similar aspect that it was just everyone was so nervous, and there's so many guys that were still fresh that everyone can still be there. Whereas, like as we've come into the tour a bit later it's been a lot easier to to move up if you want to or stay in position because there's guys that just like they don't really want to be there already anymore mm. yeah yeah then um obviously stage three was the, the first sprint day the first time to really put caleb Ewan to work and it was going so well until that that final bend what what, what was it like being part of that, that lead out, that first, you know, you talk, talking about coming to the Tour de France with purpose, you were part of Caleb Ewan's lead out. What, what was that role like and how did it unfold? Uh, so initially in the meeting, we'd spoken to, you know, how Caleb and Luke were really good mates. They'd done some of the recon of the, the last 20 kilometers and even the last 60 from the last uh, intermediate sprint. And he told us that you pretty much won't be able to move up from 60 kilometers. So you see on the stage replays, you'll bear. And I think he starts riding at 60 and then I start riding at 50. And we just had to ride from 50 until I think I peeled off at about 15 K to go, just absolutely screwed. And like, it's just got probably like 10 guys wide and everyone's just circulating in their own teams. Um, but yeah, it was just the intensity of it from so far out um, and the nerves, like all the sprinters just wanting to be there. And then the, the GC riders as well, obviously don't want to sit far back. So their trains are pushing in the sprint trains. And yeah, it, that was something that I'd never really experienced before in the lead out because the only ones I've done before with Caleb were in UAE and Belgium where the GC riders are essentially sprinters anyway. So yeah, yeah it was... Um, yeah, it was different. That's for sure. So you're riding like, so at 60 K to go, you take up, take up riding. Like how hard are you going? Uh, pulling turns about 500 to 550, I think. So, so you're we're, full noise. We're not full noise, but you are like on the rivet. On the rivet. I, I was rotating. We had Gilbert, Tim DeClerc, Askreen and myself. And we we're all trading turns oh, and Matteo Cantonero as well. And we were just like working together. Uh, but yeah, it was about that. I think I had 400, maybe 430 normalized for however long was the last pull. And you're doing like minute or two minutes as long as you can. And yeah, it was full noise. It doesn't look mm -hmm. that hard on TV, but like when you're coming around bends in the headwind, it's yeah, it's, it's not riding easy for sure. Wait, Ed, did you get did you get a chance to like look around? Like assume for you as it was for me, like Tim DeClerc and um, Phil Jill, like you're chopping turns with those guys. Yeah, it, I actually said to Phil the first race I did with him this year was uh, Tro Broleon and I was riding into some dirt sectors with him on my wheel and I was like, Phil, you know, like, 10 years ago, I used to watch you doing this. And now I'm riding with you on my wheel into some sectors. Like this feels really cool. <laughs> but yeah, like it didn't go past me, but at the same time, I was like, this is like really, really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But do you, do you feel like you get a, 
you know, I don't know, like you just get that little bit more out of you, you just get that little bit extra because it's the Tour yeah. de France. Yeah, for sure. I think everyone's the same. Like you, you come around those fans on the road again. Um, there's so much at stake, the sprinters, prize money, everything's just multiplied 10 times. So yeah, it's everyone. The, the way I was thinking about it this morning is to win a stage of the tour, you have to go and ride as if it's a one day race and you don't have the rest of the tour to ride. And if you don't win, then you still have to try and back it up. So that just the intensity of it to actually get there to even be in the finale is just incredible. Mm. So then um, that stage, Caleb crashed on the last corner. Like, do did, did you hear that over the radio or how did you, how did you find that out? Uh, no, because I came in and a little bit after I came down the downhill really easy, like just seeing bodies everywhere. Um, but yeah, like we came across and just before the line saw him laying down there and didn't really look too flash. So yeah, it wasn't, wasn't really nice to see. Yeah. And was the, like, was it just a dead team environment that evening at the, at the dinner table? Yeah. Well, it was dead up until a point and then Caleb came and had a chat to us and sort of perked us up a little bit. And then the next day everyone was down again, but he came onto the bus and he was in good spirits, you know? So like to see you, uh, yeah, uh, he's the leader of the team to come in and give us a bit of a pep talk. Uh, it was really what we needed, I think. Like as much as we'd like to say that we're all ready and raring to go, like it's really hard to to get going again after your whole objective changes. Mm. Yeah, and then on the, and I guess the um, DS the next day, like what what was his message? Ah. Uh, it, it didn't really change our objective, but it changed how we're going to get there. I guess you'd say still we're going for stages, but they're not going to come anywhere near as easy as they would have before. <laughs> like, cause yeah, cause I guess this is, this is one of the first years that they've gone full noise for Caleb and it's the shortest he's ever lasted in the Tour de France was, did they, did he talk to you specifically? Like, all right, Harry, like this is, this is what we need from you now? Uh, not really. I think the the team was qu quite unsure, I guess, how I would go in a Grand Tour. Like, I know Caleb, he pushed hard for me to be in the team. Um, but as a Neo Pro, it's the manager of the team said he's never done it in 20 odd years or something, put a Neo in, the grand, in a Grand Tour or in the Tour. Like, I've been pro six months or something. So I think they weren't really <laughs> expecting much. I think they're like, oh, whatever, Caleb, like, if you want him here, you can come sort of thing. But um, I think, like, each day as I'm getting into it, I'm proving myself more and more. But I would have really loved to have that Caleb, like, finish it off that day that we all put in, you know, and then it sort of reassures everyone in the team. So, um, yeah, it's not – the DSs haven't really said this is what you have to do, but we all sort of have just picked up the reins. Like, we can't just roll around in Gruppetto every day. So – most of the flat days we've all been quite um quite offensive i think yeah yeah and then last night you found yourself heading into a heading into the first climb of the day in the breakaway <laughs> yeah i'm <laughs> i spoke to phil about it the, the night before I'm, <laughs> I'm rooming with phil so i've got many words you're, of wisdom. you're rooming with phil jill yeah he called me up actually before the tour and i was like oh, phil's on the phone to me and he was like Oh, mate, I was wondering if you want a room together at the tour because I need someone that has a little bit of banter. I was like, <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Um, but, yeah, he was like, oh, you know, sometimes it's easier when you're in the breakaway before the climb, like you get a head start. I was like, oh, it's, it sounds good to me. <laughs> and then found myself with, uh, who was it from Quickset, Ballerini, going full gas on the flat because – I didn't know, but he was trying to stop someone from taking points on the top of the KOM. So he's riding full gas. I'm like, mate, we're at 35 seconds. You're riding 500, 600 watts on the front, and we've got 4,000 meters climbing. Like, <laughs> what's, the, what's the play here? And then he's like, oh, we go for a good result today. And then before the top, he's already dropped. And I was like, oh, I've gone so deep here. <laughs> And then there was attacks flying and uh, it was actually good, like good fun in the end because I had good legs, but I'm not sure if the tactic was the smartest from me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let's just go back to you rooming with Phil Jill. Like we, t- we talked about before chopping off with him, but like now he's your roommate. You're riding the Tour de France in your first year as a pro on Lotto Sedal. Like, does it, does it get much better? I actually don't think it does. Like it, it's it, a lot of it's going past me until I stop to think about it. Like how much my life has changed even in the past year, I guess you could say like from co- when COVID happened and I flew back to Australia, didn't know if I was going to have a contract or not. And now I'm at the tour rooming with Gilbert. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, I, I can't really explain how it feels. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, rest day to day. Have you got, you've been, uh, you've been running some Neo pro tips on Twitter, which if you haven't seen, you should check out. Have you got any Neo pro tips for the rest day? Uh, I'm not sure yet because I don't know if I've screwed it up or not. Uh, oh, you haven't got there. My, You'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, I'll find out tomorrow. But I felt good today. Did did a bit of an effort. Got my body going again. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. And like team morale wise, it sounds like things are fitting in very well. You've got slotted into Caleb's lead out train, getting along with the elder statesmen of the team. All's good at Lotto Sedal. Yeah, it's it was one of those things like when I joined, I wasn't sure where I'd fit in really because initially I signed well before I'd won Lombardia last year. And then when I won, it was like the team was like, oh, that, like this is really good. Like we didn't expect that. And then from there on, like it's sort of been, they put me, I was on the list to do with Flanders, like all the classics, a couple of monuments in my first year. Um and then I got COVID, so obviously I couldn't do Flanders. But, like, I was sort of thinking, like, this is – I think they've put a lot of faith in me and the directors have taken me under their wing quite a lot. Nico May is the director for the Classics. He's really sort of uh, been trying to mentor me in that respect. And then I have the other guys uh, for the lead out as well that are really trying to teach me the, the ropes, I guess. Mm. That's, that's fantastic. And what an opportunity to have a run, a run of the Tour de France as well, especially with, I guess it's disappointing that Caleb's not there, but the opportunity uh, still like there's big, big, big um, chances for you to go up the road and do bits and pieces and be involved in the race. Has it been, um, the last two days have looked absolutely disgusting on TV. Was, is it as bad as it looks weather-wise? Uh, the first, yeah, the day before yesterday wasn't as cold, but yesterday was really freezing and heavy rain combined. Um, but yeah, I think it just comes down to the mindset. Like if you're having a bad day, you don't want to be there. It's still two days to a rest day. You just like, you hate life. And you see that in some guys, like in Gruppetto, if you say something, some guys look at you as if you're the devil and then if someone's having a good day and you have like a bit of a chat coming up in, in the group, like it's all, all sunshine and rainbows, but it, yeah, I think it really depends on the mindset of the people there. Yeah. And so you, you were sitting in hoop group yesterday going, oh, this isn't too bad, you know, just riding along. Yeah. Well, I'd had a great day up until then, like on the first <laughs> climb, I said to the director actually, cause I went up the road so early I had four minutes on Pajaka's group before, at the bottom of the first climb. And I said in the radio, I was like, oh, how far back is Pajaka? <laughs> Just to the director, <laughs> having a laugh. But like, I could take that climb easy. So it wasn't such a bad idea, I think, that part. But yeah, like compared to some of the other guys, if you have to go full gas every climb hey. the whole day, that's no, Phil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like it's it kills your morale a bit, but I think because I sort of had to like I got an easy climb the first one and then sort of built into it, it wasn't so bad. Yeah. And one last thing just on on the last two stages, is the climbing speed out of control? Oh yeah, mate. Like it's I actually can't fathom it. You see it on TV and you're like, oh, it's not too bad. And then we're not even in the race, man. Like we're we're rolling in group head on, then we come in. I do 300 average for six hours and we're 30 minutes down. And then you see the replay and they're attacking in the big chain ring up these 10% bergs. It's just like, can't even believe in it. I don't even really want to think about it, to be honest. 
is there um is there anything that Phil Phil struggles with from your uh, Australian ways? Uh Phil, is there anything weird that I do Australian that you sh- that you think is strange? Yeah, do you drink a lot. <laughs> 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 At your age, <laughs> uh, it's not the young true, pups. But... The young pups. Well, Harry, congrats on making the tour team a super start to the year. Thanks for the, thanks for your time, and uh, wishing you all the best for the rest of the tour. Thank you, mate. It's been great to talk to you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Cheers, mate. mate.